Today, we hear, and this is the second day, tomorrow once again we'll hear Jesus say, lifting his eyes to heaven, he looked to heaven, to, and who's in heaven? His heavenly Father. Uh, that what he asks for, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given to me, so that they may be one just as we are one. You know, uh, uh, when I uh, was ordained, my holy card had uh, the passage similar to this from John's Gospel. Father, as I am one in you and you are one in me, may they be one in us. And he wasn't just talking about his apostles, but each and every one of us, all of us to this very day. And what makes us, what, what makes us one? What is that unity? Well, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that we've been praying for, huh? Praying for now since uh, Ascension Thursday, these nine days, this novena, praying for the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus commanded his apostles to go back to Jerusalem, go into that cynical, the upper room. And they, along with our Blessed Mother Mary and some other women in their group, they prayed fervently each day for the Holy Spirit. And of course, we know what happens, you know, after that ninth day, to the end of the novena, how the house shook, huh? the wind blew, and there was fire from the Holy Spirit that rested above their heads, each one of their heads like flames. Huh? Can you imagine what that must have looked like? Filled with the Holy Spirit, that they might be consecrated in truth. And what does Jesus say today? Your word is truth. The word, the eternal word that was with God, that was God, who humbled himself to become one like us and everything except for sin, you know, he, now he's going back to the Father. There's one thing he's going to have to do before he ascends on high. He's going to have to offer himself. Being consecrated means to set aside for God's work. And just as surely as we hear today uh, in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, huh, um, that we, you and I, um, have to, like Paul, Work, work at building the kingdom of God upon the face of this earth. And then Paul's very clear about that. You know, what was he in his trade in life was a tent maker. And he says, I didn't ask anything from you. I worked hard at my trade as well as working hard at delivering the good news of Jesus Christ to you. And that's what he does. And so Miletus, you know, he's about to leave, depart. And he says, you won't see my face again. He knows too that soon you know, he's going to also ascend on high, at least he hopes, huh? to be with Jesus and all the saints in heaven. But before that will happen, he too will be consecrated. Huh? He will witness. Remember I said he witness and martyr them. They, the words can be interchanged. And so he will witness even to the point of going to Rome. And he will offer himself up completely and totally to the Lord. Lose his head, if you will, for the sake of Christ. Just as Peter, you know, his companion in a sense, you know, also would offer himself up, being turned upside down and hung upon a cross. The apostles, martyrs, and saints who have gone before us, they witnessed, just as you and I are called to witness, witness today. Maybe we witness um, in the vocation God has called us as Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, huh? Consecrating ourselves in the truth because Jesus is the way and the truth and the life for us all. But he prayed that the Holy Spirit, he said, told them, go back and pray for the Holy Spirit. I will send you the advocate. And so he has. And so this coming Sunday, we will, you know, set that day aside in thanksgiving for the gift of of the birthday of the church through the power of God's Holy Spirit. By the way, whether you're here in church and I know you can't, you're at home, wear your red. You kids wear your red pajamas if you have them. Okay. But not, we wear red, what? It's a sign of God's love, the fire of God's love. So even in your homes, you know, wear red, something red. Maybe get some red flowers so you can put the rose or whatever at your altars. That would be really great. But it is God's Holy Spirit that rests upon us to allow us, whether we are priests or deacons, religious, 
married persons, single persons, huh? We remember in a special way today, uh, George and Ann McCarthy, who celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. Huh? Congratulations to you. I don't know if it was today or not, but that's the math. We're offering that up. And I also, in a special way, remember my father. He would have been 89 today, his birthday. You know, the month of May is kind of special in our family. You know, my birthday is the 23rd. My grandmother, his mother, was the 26th just yesterday. And my dad's was the 27th. And I pray that my father and my grandma might be up there in heaven now. Hmm? As they tried to witness. Did they do it perfectly? No, none of us do. But it's that Holy Spirit that guides us, huh? that allows us to see our faults, to correct those faults, and to witness, to witness to the Lord's love in our daily lives. And so today we thank God uh, that we might be consecrated in the truth of Jesus Christ our Lord, and that by doing so, one day we too may share in the glory of heaven with Him and all the apostles, martyrs, and saints.